Okay, so we're going to solve this integral, we're, but most importantly, we're going to, to learn the technique of changing the variable, but also changing the bounds because it's super useful. You will be using this all the time and especially with definite intervals because um, definite integral here, they're asking you to calculate area under this curve, okay? So if you put that in your Desmos, you will get like curve that looks like this. It's not a line, but you can approximate it in that little range to a line and calculate the area of a triangle and a rectangle. But obviously we're gonna get that accurate answer because we're gonna use calculus. But important thing is that they're asking you area and what is the answer to that question if i'm asking you the area under the curve you would need to give me some type of a number right it's not going to be a function it's going to be a number so since the answer to this new integral is also going to be a number it makes sense that you never go back to the initial variable you stay in new du u integral u variable and then you simply get the new bounds and calculate the area of the new curve. And do those areas equal one another? Absolutely, yes. That is why um, uh, the analytical part works out, but also geometry also works out. That's why math is magical. And you're gonna see that in the end of the video. We're gonna solve this, and then you'll see the graphs of both. And yes, they equal one another. So um, that's why you're not violating any rules. They're asked you area under this curve from one to five, you're gonna calculate a area of a different function that looks very different from different bounds, but it's going to be the same area. Okay, so you're going to give an accurate answer. Okay, so in these integrals, I like to do an extra step, which I usually don't do, but here it does make sense to do this because you really need to stay organized, okay? What I have done here is you have three x expressions. And in a new integral, there's not going to be a single x expression. You need to get every single thing that is in terms of x in terms of du. So you need to see what x equals to in terms of u. You need to see what this expression equals to in terms of u and this. So I have x written separately and I labeled it 1. So first I need to get that. Then I need to get this whole expression. 1 I don't worry about because that's the same in, is in du integral, right? So and numbers you don't have to translate, but anything that you that has x that needs to be translated in terms of u. So there are three things, and that therefore I need those three expressions in terms of u. Okay, and then finally I need new bounds because I can't write x bounds for a du integral. No, no, I need u lower bound, u upper bound here. So this whole expression under the square root with the square root is u, okay? So how do you know what u is when you look at this integral? Unfortunately, you there's no rule of thumb that you can use that would tell you that this is u, but you would never try x to be u because that's the simplest thing. You always want u to be some the most complicated thing in the integral so that you have you take du and then that would be your du, right? But here you can reach for the stars and set this whole complicated thing, which is under the square root equal to u. And that's usually what you do and what you wanna do when you have a square root in the interval. And this, when you follow the uh, down the path of if you said u equals to two x minus one, nothing happens. So then next thing you would do is set that equal to u and that's how you would know on the exam or something, right? So after a trial and error, you will figure it out. Okay, so the first expression that I just wrote down actually got me expression for that in terms of u. So number two is already ticked off, okay? So that expression under the square root equals to u. So that's done. I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna like copy paste it. I want that to be there nicely sitting. But what I'm going to do next is square both sides so I can get rid of that square root and be able to write it like this. And then this is u square. Okay, so 2x equals u squared plus 1. 
x equals to u squared plus one over two. Okay, so I needed expression for x in terms of u and I did that. So that was my first expression done. Okay, won't mess with that because I will need that. So I'm not gonna be writing over that. Okay, so since I have x, now I'm able to take dx because I need expression for dx, okay? So I, I differentiate both sides. So dx equals, so one over two comes out of this expression because all you have here is one over two times u squared plus one, okay? So one over two comes out and you take derivative of u squared plus one. Derivative of u squared is simply two u. Derivative of one or any number, any constant is zero. So it's two u plus zero, but I don't write that. Twos get canceled. So I ended up with dx equals u du. Okay, let me write that out separately. Okay, and that was my third thing. Okay, now I have all three x expressions expressed in terms of u. On the right side, there is no x, x's that I can see. So I am ready to write the new integral, okay? So first thing is x and that is that expression, so that's x, and then, let's get that in blue, and then I have one over this expression equals u, so I have one over u, and then dx equals u du, so I have u times du here. I'm not done because I cannot write one and five here. This is a du interval now. It's no longer dx integral. And these were x bounds because it was dx integral. So I need u lower bound and u upper bound. And the way I'm gonna find that is using x lower bound or x one, which is equals one. And the way I can find this is if I have an expression that links u and x, which I do, then I can go back and forth. It's kind of like a recipe. So do I have an expression that says that makes u out of x or says u equals something blah, 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 x? I do, it's right here. You see, u equals square root of two x minus one. That's a recipe for u to make u out of x. Okay, so u equals two x one or x upper bound or simply one, and that is square root of two minus one, that's square root of one, that's simply one, okay? And this is u lower bound. You get u lower bound from x lower bound, okay? So this gives you this lower bound, okay? So in the recipe, you plug in lower bound x to get lower bound u. Then x two, x upper bound is five. Okay, so two times five minus one, that is 10 minus one, square root of nine, that's three. Okay, so my new bounds are one and three. In this case, it happened that lower bound is less than upper bound, but if it so happens that this was three and this was one, uh, that might look wrong, but it's not. Sometimes it happens that way and you just follow the solution, you follow the rules and you solve it and everything will uh, end up being correct, okay? So it's not a problem for lower bound to be less than in value than upper bound. In this case, it didn't, but sometimes it happens. So don't let that worry you. Okay, let's copy this here and solve this interval. First of all, we can cancel these u's here. So, and then I can take out 
1 over 2 from this integral. So I have 1 and then I have u squared plus 1 du. That is simple power rule. Okay, so going to kind of use that algorithmic rule of increase power of a variable by 1, so cubed, and then put the same number as you put in the uh, power and the denominator. And then even if you don't have variable, you still get uh, u to the first power because here you have u to the zeroth power. And then all of this from 1 to 3. Fundamental theory of calculus is substituting everything you have in terms of u with upper bound here and lower bound here. And then taking the difference. Okay, so first I have 3 cubed over 3 plus 3. Then I have 1 cubed, which is just 1, plus 1. Okay, so you don't have to write that. Okay, so this is just algebra. 1 over 2, so this gets cancelled. So you have 3 squared there, which is 9 plus 3 is 12. Then 1 over 3 plus 1 is 4 over 3, so minus 4 over 3. Okay, and that is 3 times 12, that's 36 minus 4, 32 over 3. Okay, these get cancelled and I have 16 over 3. Okay, we can box this as the final answer. Now, let, this was like analytically done, right? So we said that area under this curve from one to five, I'm not gonna calculate that area. I'm gonna calculate another area, but don't you worry, I'll give you the right answer. I will effectively solve this integral is basically what we're saying, but don't worry, I'll get the right answer. Why? Because if you look at the graph and we're gonna look at it, the area under this curve from 1 to 5 equals area under this curve from 1 to 3 times 1 over 2. And this is the area of the first original graph. This was the function, right? And you had one, 1 to 5. And this area equals this area right here divided by 2, right? Because you do have that constant here, which you need to maintain. So both of these areas are 16 over 3, and that is why it's allowed to never actually solve this integral, to translate it in a new variable and solve a totally different integral, but get the right answer, okay? Notice here that here, f of u equals u squared plus 1 uh, over 2, that is actually x equals u squared plus 1 over 2, right? So how is that, it's almost that dependent and independent variables switched here. Well, this sort of a change of variable integration is also called, called integrating composite functions. And that's why that ended up like that. And there's a theorem, composite function integration theorem, and that's what we used here effectively. But this, uh, kind of following the logic will suffice. You don't actually need to learn anything new because here we just used what we know and that will get you the right answer every time. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.